Well, it took me long enough, but by your popular request, I finally got my hands on my first outdoors RV, and I gotta tell you, I've never seen something laid out like this before. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd with Vicious RV, hanging out today with my Nebraska brothers and sisters, finally getting my hands on an outdoors RV. And this is the wackiest floor plan I think I've ever seen. And now that I've seen a rear kitchen like this, I'm kind of confused as to why I've never seen a rear kitchen like this before, because I think it's fantastic. It, it doesn't have a lot of overhead cabinet space, but it has a good dedicated pantry. It has uh, just a, a, a gob ton of prep space, but it all wraps around the, uh, the, the campsite cook. It just all wraps around you, and just an incredible amount of lower storage. Uh, it, this is a camper where, like, if you're going to be in the middle of nowhere, and you want to, like, back yourself up to, like, some kind of lake or mountain scene or something like that, oh, my gosh, the views that you're going to get out of this is just tremendous. Now, I don't know that it's an ideal RV for for sitting inside picking your butt on a rainy day or anything like that um, but you know it's, it's an RV that's good for you know getting in there cooking some meals have it uh, you know sitting down having your meal uh, a, a true queen size bed that doesn't have a backbreaker death way for mattress I think the bathroom is all right in this um, ORV being a sister to that Northwood RV they've got that strong weather package on here and a lot of like really really rugged construction like they build their own chassis they don't just buy a chassis out of a catalog or anything like that um, that being said the floor plan like I said for for in terms of a living room is a little bit janky but I think this is an RV for someone who wants to spend the majority of their time outside but maybe have their eggs and coffee inside in the morning or something like that um, as you can see, we are in a little bit of a live show display, so we might be uh, seeing some unexpected guests. I'm going to do my best to try to keep the focus on the RV. And if you appreciate how we go, <laughs> I went two time zones away just to get one of these because I had so many requests for them. Make sure you hit the subscribe button or like our video if you're a return member of the RV Nerd Herd. And let's get in there and see what this one's all about. So, since I've never been through this thing, I kind of wanted to start from almost, I think, a customer's perspective. When you first walk in the RV, this is what you're going to see right here. And it, it's not that it has a bad flow. It's just very uncommon, very irregular from what you find in the industry standard marketplace. That doesn't make this a bad model. Just mean it might not be the ideal one for everybody. Like, you're kind of getting a look here. The TV just faces right at that dinette. And frankly, I think one of the best seats in the house would actually be uh, if you were the neighbor in the campsite next door, I think you'd probably have the best view of the TV on this one. But I, I don't think that this is an RV made with the idea of somebody spending all day inside the, uh, the, the camper watching TV. Um, that, by the way, like you just see a dinette. You can't, you don't get a feel of the perspective of this. So that is the size of like a seven foot long U dinette, except they just didn't make it a U dinette. They made it a big adult uh, friendly area here with just a giant table on that sucker and breeze windows all the way around. I also like they sneakily put a, uh, a switch for the ceiling lights right up there in the ceiling of that. Now, just to let some extra light in here, you do have that vaulted ceiling, but it does include a little skylight right there. Of course, you have that little shade so you don't feel like an ant under the magnifying glass. And uh, walking around to the other side of the bed, tripping on the bed, giving you a little bit more of a, uh, a look at everything else here. Now, this is a brand that is intended to be, uh, you know, built for hot, cold camp ratings. The most effective way of heating an RV is with floor ducted heating. It provides the, uh, the most um, uh, CFMs, cubic foot per minute of airflow. Uh, that might not be for everybody. I, I think you could probably pretty easily put a, a little, you know, throw rug or something like that over them if, you know, you're, you're summer camping and you don't need all that. Now, the kitchen, I think, is really the star of this RV, and this is where I want to spend the majority of the time. I, I would like your feedback, though. What do you think about these black wood inserts on that gas electric two-way refrigerator freezer right there? That kind of really just stuck out at me. At the same time, I don't dislike the fact that it's not um, homogenized one-tone cabinetry throughout the entire RV. Um, and it certainly does have a lot of HOA-approved browns all the way through it. But 
there's something just slightly different in richness, like, in color. like there's a little bit more of just maybe a red rich tinge to this woodwork versus the, the, the Northwood sister product that somehow it, it stood apart to me. I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe it's just the lighting. Speaking of which, by the way, I'm about to flicker some lights. If you're light sensitive, you might want to look away. Um, it's very easy to underappreciate how much lighting they actually have going on here. Now, as I said, this rear kitchen, it's this giant rear like U kitchen instead of U. I've never seen a U kitchen wrapped around the back of the RV like this. But one of the things that I really do like, because the window is directly uh, over the stovetop, so they didn't have a chance for a stovetop vent hood. So they made sure you had that big XL vent fan right there. Uh, that's, that's one of the things I really like about this company. They do not tend to use the four inch fart fans. They tend to almost exclusively use the big Fajita Friday fume fighters, which I like. Uh, but you know, solid surface countertops all the way through. And the, the details on this, like when I lifted up the sink covers, see how they're all notched out like that so that they fit and they don't really jiggle around too much, but they're still countertop flush if you need them to be. And again, if you are like right now, I don't, I don't know that this does this RV justice. If we were backed up to a lake or like a, a mountain overlook or something, the views that you can get back here while you're doing your kitchen work, this right here is just awesome. Because again, this RV strikes me as something where I want to spend the majority of my time outside. But while you are in here, um, it doesn't suck, you know, <laughs> it doesn't suck at all. There's also, I, I mean, easy reach appliance outlets down at countertop level, anywhere that they could put them. You see some more of them back here uh, in case, you know, you got some stuff. Now, this right here, we're actually going to see, you can access that from the outside if you want to, but that could be an awesome trash can space. That's what that's intended to be there for, because otherwise you wouldn't really, uh, oop, I'm bumping into stuff, sorry. You wouldn't be able to get into it. Um, there are uh, eight normal like kitchen drawers in here plus a uh, a whole bunch of like there's the extra drawer below the oven and just a ton of other storage and that pantry microwave tower right there you don't see stuff like that like dead in the middle of the wall of an rv very commonly in today's market uh but the the fact is what they've done here is created like a dedicated kitchen a a, a separate living space and and kind of a separate bedroom without actually needing to be like a 32 foot long camper. Now looking inside here, one thing to mention, they are not currently offering a 12 volt DC compressor fridge swaption on these. Right now, what you're seeing right there, that is what they do, that gas electric fridge. That's just a Pacific Northwest thing. These are really made for a lot of boondocking. Uh, you got blackout roller shades in the kitchen. You do have pleated cloth shades in the living room. Uh, all the cabinetry is pocket screwed lumber core, so real screws into wood. You see the heavy duty uh, plywood boxing on the drawers as well. Uh, if there's one thing this RV ain't short on, it's storage. And what is nice is this one actually has the cargo capacity to handle all that. Now again, that giant dinette folded down into, I was shocked at how big it was. When I laid down, I was like, wow, that really was big. Um, and what's cool is your benches that you're sitting on, it's the lamination punch outs, like where they cut the windows out of the walls, they turn those into your uh, your, your decking for under the bed. You know, they're, they're just doing stuff, or under the dinette rather, they're just doing stuff a little bit differently. And maybe I, I like it just because it is different because I see the same things all the time. But when I get to see something new and different and interesting like this, like I understand now, why so many people are like Josh? What are you gonna What are you gonna review ORV? What you got against ORV? Why won't you review? I had nothing against them. I just don't live out west where I get to see them every day, and I'm frankly getting to be a little bit uh, jealous for it. <laughs> now uh, we glanced at the bed up front here, the bedroom area. One thing I want to point out though, that is a 60 by 80 true queen bed. That is not the Shorty McShort pants version that the Bed Goblin Union will appreciate. Now something I I should have done a better job of showing. I'm so sorry. If you look down here. You may have noticed how under the bed, the storage kind of stopped a little bit short. That's because there's also individual dresser drawers. So you have individual dresser drawers, individual closets for both sides of the bed. You have household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed, including like a little 12 volt power point. 
Um, bonus points to anybody who can tell us where our solar charge controller is currently blinking right now. It's unhappy about something. It's actually not that complicated to figure out. Um, you saw how the TV can pivot around. So if you want to, you know, enjoy a little bit of the screen uh, in the evening when you're laying down, you can. Obviously, it's really more, I think, facing the dinette. But that entertainment center on the wall like that's a little bit different. Um, in a small camper, though, for, for what this is intending to do, I think it works. But it's obviously, you know, not the uh, home theater experience or anything like that. Again, they only use the bigger vent fans uh, in here. Now, this big blank wall, ooh, you're getting a little view of me over here. This big blank wall, we've got a couple drunken octopus coat hangers, which is nice. Uh, you know, drunken octopus wants to fight. Sober octopus thinks you should calm down. But, uh, hey, you know, sometimes uh, everybody has two different personalities on some days. Um, in case you're wondering the yellow tape, that's because um, here at a live RV show, that is not the deposit that we're looking for. <clears throat> anyway, uh, they, like, it's, it's a little bit tight around the toilet. But overall, the way that they did that countertop cutaway, the way that they angled the toilet, it was just... It was Mama Bear. It was just right that it was adequate. I could make it work. Now, they went with a tub instead of a shower here, but that's because they went with a shower curtain. Now, I've got it kind of tied up on itself to get it out of the way, but one of the things that I want to showcase for you here is how it has this, uh, this swing-out kind of shower curtain rod. That is a game-changer for extra elbow room when you need it because not only with the vaulted ceiling is this tall enough for me to fit in, but with the extra elbow room there, uh, I can actually soap up, well, I would say my my hair, but maybe more appropriately my, my scalp <laughs> and have the elbow room to do it, even with long, lanky arms like mine. Now, what I'm not sure about, I'm a little bit concerned, and we're about to find out, is what's this one going to be like in road mode? And that's a little bit of what I was afraid of, because the thing is they're using a really extra deep slide out right here. So when it closes up and gets near that bathroom, it really starts bossing the camper around. So this is going to be one that if you do need to make a travel stop to get to stuff, you're going to have to plan accordingly and park away from folks. One of the things I noticed, though, is if you travel with the dining table down or if you pull the dining table out of the way, you could sneak around the corner and get to the bathroom, assuming you did what I did here and leave the bathroom door open, which means you'll also need to find a way to secure the bathroom door. Or if you really, really look, depending on your stature, and it would be easier if the bathroom door was closed, you might do a sideways travel trailer two-step to get back there to that bathroom in road mode travel stop, uh, you know, moments. Um, but again, overall, I, I don't know that this one is ideal for a lot of traveling stops. It definitely gets very, very tight in here very quickly. And sometimes stuff like that, people will see it and go, man, you had me right up until then. And I get that. And that's a bummer and that's hard to hear. But if you appreciate how we go out of our way to show things sometimes that aren't the most positive about an RV, hit that subscribe button or at least like our video if you've been back with us uh, or if you've been with us before and you're back now. I think you get what I mean, right? All right, so first and foremost, we got to talk towing on this thing because when you start seeing a 21 model number, you start expecting some really white, uh, lightweight little tags. But when you check this one out, like it's got a, a, a fairly hefty GVW, although not like, you know, 12K GVW or something, but you want some good cargo capacity. Like this brings good things to the table that you, uh, you don't always find in a smaller RV like this, but everything on it is built thicker and heavier. This is not made to be uh, a flimsy, ultralight or something like that like that it's got a custom crafted chassis they literally build their own chassis in-house just like their sister northwood the general construction between the two is the same it's really just a matter of they have different floor plans and they have a a little bit different aesthetic now down below there you saw that's all enclosed one of the really cool things on these is uh they are renowned for having a very strong weather package, really nicely hot, cold camp rated. And once again, I would ask existing ORV owners, if you've gone some crazy hot, cold camping, please chime in and share that with us. Uh, now down inside here, we have ourselves a large front passer. This thing really opens right up, but notice the uh, flooring down in here, how they don't have that sort of like carpeted stuff. They're using that uh, industrial toy hauler rubberized flooring. Then there's little things. How often do you hear me say in my videos, I wish they would just move the battery disconnect where it wouldn't get smashed. How about putting it in its own little cavity where it's protected? 
Like, that's awesome. Now, when you get a chance to see one of these, get your hands on these baggage doors. Most baggage doors in RVs are only a half inch thick. These are a full inch. And notice just like the diesel pusher uh, slam latch hardware that they have going on here. Everything is uh, a little more rugged. Everything holds square. Built stronger to last longer. Now you kind of saw the little sticker there and as long, uh, you know, I'm going to go out of order a little bit today. Let's go ahead and take a peek up at the roof right now. Uh, a couple things, you'll see where it has that Max Air vent fan cover for the bathroom. Also, the uh, 200 watt solar package that we have up there, uh, you know, that is, uh, that's more than the standard package that you find out of the Northwood Sisters. Uh, you should be able to expand on that a little bit, of course. And as long as I'm back here, look at the awning. They put max awning coverage on this. And again, I'm at a weird angle because we're here at an RV show and there's only so much I can do. But uh, if you notice, we have a fully shrouded, uh, you know, protected awning right there. And what that's going to do for us is when the RV's in storage, when the weather is just beating on it, it'll keep the base of the awning fabric from becoming shredded wheat. Uh, now, over here, we have ourselves a uh, hot, cold outside utility shower. Very handy for, uh, you know, rinsing the turtle muck off yourself after you took a little dip in the pond. Whether you meant to or just, you know, got drunk and fell out of the boat. And that, by the way, is why statistically, fishing is the most dangerous sport. A lot of people, uh, you know, you think there's, you know, boxing and mixed martial arts and football and all that, but technically speaking, more fatalities every year in the realm of sport fishing than anything else. Kind of, uh, kind of crazy. That being said, I think the uh, instance of alcohol-related accidents probably very high. So, in retrospect, I actually apologize. That's not something I should even joke about because I'm willing to bet there's somebody watching this video who maybe has lost someone they know in that instance. So again, my, my apologies there. I won't claim to be perfect. This is a little chunk of storage. Uh, I call it why not storage. Uh, they weren't able to use it inside because of the, the, that L-shaped, uh, you know, rear kitchen, well, full U-kitchen, actually. I don't think I've ever seen a U-kitchen like that on the back of an RV, but I really like it. Uh, but you, you did see, you know, there's a spot in there that you couldn't get to. Yeah, so they made it easy. This does have a single sewer outlet. And just look at the little details here. Because the sewer outlet's right next to things like these Goodyear Endurance Radials, they wanted to make sure that flinging rocks weren't going to smash up your sewer stuff. Now, this has like fifth wheel grade suspension going on here. We've got the Goodyear Endurance Radials, American made, rated for 87 miles an hour. We also have a Moride CRE3000 shock dampening suspension system and wet bolt fasteners, but that is not all. Let me literally climb under this thing for you. I mean, literally, who else Who else does this for you guys? So getting down here under this thing, let me, uh, there we go, let me shed some light on the situation. You also have literal shocks added to this, because some people are gonna see this and go, it's just a leaf spring suspension, what's the big deal? If you wanna get off the pavement, if you wanna get away from people, it's gonna prevent your RV from just getting rattle traps snapped all over the place. So like I said, rugged. And remember, they are running on their own chassis. Now this is something I haven't done in a while. I used to do this all the time. I kind of got out of the practice of it. But speaking of mixed martial arts, if you want to come over here, like you're some champion welterweight doing some ground and pound, you can hammer fist the side of these uh, the slide boxes and ain't gonna flinch. Frankly, uh, anyone who's ever been worried about me thumping on an RV with my little chicken arms, only thing I'm ever going to hurt is, well, myself, especially uh, on one of these. A um, couple last little details, UV tinted windows. Up front you see uh, the bigger propane tanks, but something that's really easy to miss that people forget to think about when they're shopping. Look at the height of this, uh, this power jack. A lot of power uh, tongue jacks have a very short shank, so if you got like a jacked up truck, because you're going muddy, brother, yeah! Well. Uh, they uh, they're they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to level out this one. You can you don't gotta park the tongue on blocks just to get it hitched up to your truck. And good God, look at how big the stone guard is on the front of this thing. That's bigger than my appetite on a Friday buffet night. So once again, let me know what you think. Like, what do you think about ORV? What do you think about the layout in general? Like, is it this thing is bonkers? But is it crazy? Is it awesome? 
or is it crazy awesome? And I think the answer here is really going to depend on where and how you camp. If you're like me from the Midwest, where a lot of people park camp with full hookups, I don't know that this is the perfect layout for me. I do really like what I see out of ORV though. And I, and I would really appreciate any existing ORV owners, if you could chime in the comment section and share your experiences, because I can run my mouth all day. But what I hear, what I hear from actual owners is just that like, if you're looking for the last RV you ever want, this is a brand you really ought to consider here. There are a couple bucks more, there are a couple pounds more, but built stronger to last longer is the general idea that I hear out of these. So if that sounds good to you, give us a call when you're ready. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone.